Chapter 5. Will a man rob God? A covenant is an agreement between God and man. We all must be subject to God by the Holy Spirit and give him control over us, or else we cannot be his sons and daughters. Our Holy Father, who is our Creator, must have the preeminence in our lives so that we do not get out of order and mess everything up like they have done in this world. The Gentiles were never under the Old Covenant. They were strangers from the covenants and promises of God. But now both Jew and Gentile have access to God by one Spirit, through Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit, which is the gift and promise of God under the New Covenant and Everlasting Covenant. If the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no need for a second. Acts 2.17 And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Here is the big problem. They say the Bible is the Word of God, and so people are controlled by a book instead of by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 3.16 As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which some things are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, under their own destruction. Putting your faith in the scriptures will destroy you. You must be led by the living Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. These are some examples of how the Bible is misused. Tithes. Will a man rob God? That is old covenant. Will the devil rob man? Yes. Tithes were for Levi. His tribe had no land inheritance with his brethren in Israel. Only under the tribe of Levi gave he no inheritance. So they were to be given a tenth to supply their needs and for the care of the temple and the ministration of the things of God. They rest the scriptures to rob you and make themselves rich off of your labor. There are 37 million churches in the world, 380,000 churches in the USA, 45,000 denominations, and 2.6 billion Bible worshipers, all full of sin and confusion. This was done by Satan, taking people's money in the guise of giving to God. God does not dwell in temples made by hands. Our body is the temple of God, not buildings and not the Bible. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Today that would be impossible, because God has no house here on earth. The earthly temple was destroyed in 70 A.D., so what they are really saying today when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord, is let us go to the house of Satan, because the devil built those churches, and God does not dwell in temples made with hands. They want you to go to church so they can take 10% of your money and to control you by a book to put you into captivity. They want you to worship a book and the one that had it compiled and authorized, the God of this world, the devil, because he gives them the desires of their lustful hearts. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Whosoever loves his life will lose it, but whosoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. The Bible is an idol. If you want to have eternal life, then ask Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit. That is all you need. There is so much confusion in the churches today. What is the true doctrine? They teach, go to church on Sunday. Others say, go to church on Saturday. Some say, women can preach. Others say, women cannot preach. Some baptize in Jesus' name, and others in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Some say, once saved, always saved. Some say, you must endure to the end. I prayed to Jesus and asked him what was the true doctrine, and he wrote the foundation teachings in my heart with light from heaven. These are the foundation teachings that God wrote in my heart by his Spirit with light from heaven. The foundation is also mentioned in Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. There are eight stones in the foundation. Stone number one, Jesus the Christ, the chief cornerstone, the anointed one by God to be Savior and King. Stone two, repent. That means to change to God's ways. Change from living after the flesh to living after the Spirit. Stone 3. Faith toward God. Faith is trusting in the Spirit of the invisible God and what He tells you by the Holy Ghost. Stone 4. 
baptism in water. This is your funeral day. You give up your life after the flesh as Jesus gave up his. That is why we are baptized in Jesus' name. He is the one that died for us. Stone 5. Baptism in the Spirit of God. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit is when you are born again. Stone 6. God lives in us and uses your body. They call it the laying on of hands. Your body becomes the temple of God. Your life is no longer your own. God uses your body, your hands, your mouth, your legs, etc. Stone number seven, the resurrection of the dead. Without the resurrection, there is no hope. Stone number eight, eternal judgment. We can repent now while we are still in the body, but eternal judgment will be forever. So be careful how you live while in the body. We must hear the voice of Christ. We must hear what the Spirit says to the church. We must look for Jesus in the Spirit. So do not look for him in a book or churches. You will never find him there. You may learn about him from the Bible, but you will never find him there. He will be found in the Spirit. With your heart we serve God. God is a Spirit, and he must be worshipped in Spirit and in truth.